Hello there everyone, it is Toby from TIJ Music and welcome to a new album review. It'll be a week late but I really wanted to get into this album, wanted to listen to it a few times before I told you all what I thought of it. So some people might have bought a review out earlier but I thought I would really want to get into this album, listening to it for a few times and give it the give it the, uh, the the playing time that it deserves. And that is the new ACDC album, Power Up, I have got it on vinyl. This is the first album, the new, first new album at least I've got on vinyl, probably ever. I've been collecting records for a year and a half now. And before this there was no new album that came out that really enticed me to buy it. If we look at the design of the front, it's quite nice. We've got on the back the, the band all a bit darkened, all beat. We've got Cliff Williams, Phil Rudd, Angus Young, Brian Johnson back in the group and uh, Stevie Young and we've got the track list on the bottom which we'll talk about in a little while. But uh, power up. It's a good album. It really is a good album. We're going to talk about the tracks in a little while. But I have to say, after Rock or Bust in 2014, I really didn't think we'd get another ACDC album again. I think by the time that I went to see them in 2016, when they were on the Rock or Bust tour, I can't believe that was four and a half years ago now, with Axl Rose. I think we all thought that was the end. Unofficially, it was the, it was the last tour because Axl Rose had replaced Brian Johnson. We'd sadly heard that Malcolm Young had got dementia, and unfortunately, 12 months after that, he passed away and things just started to wilt away and questions started to be asked. Could Angus run the group by himself? Cliff Williams was going to leave after the tour and it very much seemed like that was it. But no, Phil Rudd, Brian Johnson, Cliff Williams all back in the band. And I think this album was recorded about a year, a year and a half ago. And I think the band have picked a perfect time to bring this out. So as I said, this comes six years after Rock or Bust in 2014. It's been released on the 13th of November 2020, Friday the 13th. I think Rock or Bus was a good album. It was patchy in some places, and I think it's a little bit too early to make comparisons to Power Up because sometimes we all listen to a new album and think, wow, it's brilliant, and sometimes over time that either wilts away, or similarly, you don't think it's too good, and over time you think, wow, this is brilliant. Of course, retrospective review. As we've seen over the years with so many hard rock albums where the, the critics have slated it, and then 30, 30, 40 years later they say, all right, that was an awesome album, and maybe we got it wrong at the time. As I said, Phil Rudd, Brian Johnson, Cliff Williams, all back in the band after their various hiatuses. As I said earlier, we really all thought it was over. So to a get, maybe a swan song from ACDC is absolutely awesome. Now, all tracks on here are credited to Angus and Malcolm. And you'll see on the inner sleeve here that this album is definitely uh, dedicated to Malcolm. You can see on the uh, middle of that sleeve there, it says this one is for Mal. On the other side, we've got all the electrical sockets and all of the personnel on here. So we've got Angus Young on lead guitar, as you'd expect. Brian Johnson lead vocals, Cliff Williams on bass, Phil Rudd on drums, and Stevie Young on rhythm guitar. Produced by Brendan O'Brien. I think the last album was produced by Brendan O'Brien. I'm not too sure. But yeah, it's a really nice glossy vinyl. I got this on Monday, so I didn't listen to the album. I really wanted to kind of go back into the nostalgic old days and not listen to it until I got the vinyl. And it was well worth it. I listened to it a few times over on vinyl. I was like, oh, this is good. This is really, really good stuff. And we'll talk about it, as I say, in a little bit. Uh, the album's title was announced quite late on, really, on the 7th of October. There were little snippets and little videos on their social media that made us think, ooh, I up, I up, because something could be coming here. And uh, it was released five and a half weeks later, the first album. Shot in the Dark, the first single, that was released on the 7th of October. Top the Billboard mainstream uh, rock song charts for the next first few two weeks, actually. And the second single, the first song on the album, Realised, was uh, released on YouTube and uh, other places two days before the album's release on the 11th of November. And I don't know about you, but listening to those two songs before, um, we had the... I'm just... That's flickered there, my, web, my webcam, so I'm a bit worried. But those first two tracks that were brought out made me think, oh, we could be in for a good one here, unless these are the highlights. A little bit like Rock Hole Bus, where we had a few highlights and then the rest was a bit mm, iffy. But I've got to reevaluate that album. I've got to go and listen to it again at some point and maybe do a, um, an album war, if you like, between these two. Uh, but the album has gone to number one in Australia, Belgium, France, Italy, Germany, Ireland, New Zealand, Norway, Sweden and the UK, just to name a few. And it's the fastest selling album in the UK of 2020. I was having this discussion with my parents a few days ago. I honestly think, and you can debate this until you know the cows go home, but ACDC, worldwide, I think they're the biggest group in the world now. I really do. I think that their stock has risen massively in the last 10, 15 years. They were obviously in Iron Man 2. That helped them be introduced to younger audiences. And, and the last few albums have been great. And 
I think that that's really introduced them to a new audience. And I think they are the biggest, in terms of stock now, the biggest band in the world. And that certainly shows. You know, it's, it's no mean feat to have the fastest selling album of 2020. Just to name a few that have come out in the last few weeks. We've got Bruce Springsteen's Letter to You. That's a good album. I've enjoyed that. I might review that in the next few weeks. We've also had Kylie Minogue release an album, which probably isn't in the same ballpark as good old uh, Bruce the Boss and ACDC. But even so, a big act as well. So to have released this album and in a week sold more than the top five combined just shows how much stock ACDC have. And obviously that's just in the UK, but overall uh, in the world, one of the biggest groups in the world, if not the biggest group in the world. But after all that background yada, uh, let's look at the tracks. So on side A, we've got Realise, Rejection, Shot in the Dark, Through the Mists of Time, Kick You When You're Down, and Witchy Spell. And on side B, Demon Fire, Wild Reputation, No Man's Land, Systems Down, Money Shot, and closing off the album, Code Red. Station to station, Code Red. Sorry. Uh, genuinely, I've been playing this album a few times over the week, and I've been walking at work up to the up to the factory shop floor, and uh, I'm, I'm just I'm just having a little sing to myself, and uh, sometimes you're a bit louder than you realise. Whoops, but uh, oh well. But let's have a look at the first track on the album then very quickly. So let's have a look at Realise, the first track on the album. As I said, released the single on the 11th, and it is a great start to the album. Brian sounds great here. I mean, Shot in the Dark was the first glimpse we got of this lineup of the band, but Realise really showing, well, wow. Brian sounds brilliant here. Great guitar licks. The band just sound awesome together. And this just brings out a real statement of, look, we're back together. Oh, oh we are rocking. We're, we're, we're really rocking. And, uh, yeah, great track. For this, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. For those who haven't watched my album reviews before, I give a rating out of 10 to the track. And then we kind of um, have an average at the end of the review. And you'll probably notice I cut the video there because I hadn't done the average rating. So I needed to do that. I went away for a few seconds and calculated that. But 8 out of 10 for Realise, a really good start to the album. The second track is one called Rejection. It's one that's grown on me, actually, in the last few days. I think that some tracks yeah, have a real connection to straight away, the likes of Realise, Shot in the Dark. But this one took a little bit of time to grow on me. But there's a great guitar riff at the start of the track, as you'd expect. Bit of a slower tempo, but great, catchy lyrics as usual. Uh, the, the chorus of the, pretty much all of these songs are absolutely awesome. Really catchy, really memorable, and that's key with an album like this. Because... With ACDC, they're not deep, meaningful songs. We know the score with ACDC. We know what to expect. And, and people saying, Oh, it's just another ACDC album. It sounds exactly the same. Well, here's some news for you. This is exactly what you should expect. ACDC aren't going to change the formula. And that's what uh, us fans absolutely adore them for. But another 8 out of 10, another solid track. Then we move on to track number 3, the first single, Shot in the Dark. And this is a real classic, genuinely... I think this is probably one of the best ACDC tracks since Rock and Roll Train from Black Ice in 2008. And I think, I think if they went out on tour again, this would be the, the track that they'd probably start with, I'd say. Yeah, I'd probably say this is the this would be the opener. And the only disappointment is, is that this is a great track in the first sing single, but there's no title track. That was really disappointing. Obviously, we had it on Rock or Bus, Black Ice, Stiff Upper Lip, I think we did. Ball Breaker. When was the last time we didn't have a side title track on an ACDC album? Was it Fly on the Wall? No, it was Blow Up Your Video, wasn't it? Yeah, in 88. I don't think there was a track called Blow Up Your Video, but a bit disappointing. But nonetheless, let's have a look at Shot in the Dark. It's maybe had a bit more time to grow on me, that's fair, but it's an awesome track. So catchy, the riffs are perfect. Great vocals from Brian Johnson, what can you say? He sounds like a man who's been rejuvenated. I think the whole band do, and they've really been rewarded by how well this album sold in the first week. Brian Johnson... If you compare his voice to his first record with ACDC, now 40 years ago with Back in Black, there's not much difference. If anything, it sounds richer. And for a man who's over 70 years of age now, that is just mind-blowing. It really is. Track number four, and this is... I wouldn't say the first disappointment, because that's harsh. This is Through the Mists of Time. It was the first track on the album I wasn't immediately drawn to, and I've actually heard a few people say this is the best track on the album. I think it's a bit weaker than the first three, personally. I'll still give it a 7 out of 10. Shot in the Dark, by the way, is a 9 out of 10, a real classic. It's a little bit weaker uh, after a strong start, I think. Angus's riff is still perfect, though, as you'd expect, but it might grow on me over time. Again, as I've said, retrospective reviews, things will change massively. What I give this album today as a ranking might well change tomorrow, but that's just the way it goes. I'm going to give this one a 7 out of 10. Not a bad track at all, though. Track number 5, Kick You When You're Down. Now, I love this one, particularly... Brian's gravelly vocals at the start, uh, that that could have spoken word section. I mean, it didn't take long to write this one because it's pretty much why don't they kick? Uh, why do they kick you when you're down? But 
it's got all the ACDC classic qualities, and that's something you can say about a lot of the tracks on this album. As I alluded to before, it's a similar formula to what you'd expect, and that's just about perfect. It's catchy, it's groovy. Again, the band sound great together, and 8 out of 10 for that one, uh, one of the best ones in the album. So rounding out side one, so we've had Realise, Rejection, Shot in the Dark, Through the Mist of Time, Kick You When You're Down, and finally side A on the LP concludes with Witched, Witch's Spell. And I can't figure this one out. The riff on this track reminds me of, a, of an ACDC track from the past, but I just can't put my finger on it, so that's going to really annoy me until I can find it. Uh, this one is a little bit like Through the Mist of Time. It's not quite caught my attention yet, but it's a good track. It, it's consistent, which is all that matters. You're going to have your highlights on the album, and maybe to say that track four and track six aren't so great just shows how good the other tracks are. Again, if, if you're giving Realise an H, you have to kind of put it on a par with each other. If the par score is eight, if you like, maybe which you spell is a little bit below that. But uh, seven out of ten again, a really solid first side. Not a track below a seven out of ten. Shot, a shot in the dark at a nine. Uh, and a great side A. Uh, we now move on to side B, or side 2 as you might call it. In fact, I'm going to show you the record because I haven't actually done that. A nice uh, custom label design. My only gripe with it is that you have to read the, the label um, to, to understand what side's which. So it's actually right down the bottom here where you see what side it is. This is side B, but you, you, I mean luckily we've got a good light. But when I was in the living room the other day and it was pitch black, I had no idea what side I was putting on. So that's the nice label for side A. And side B um, has a similar label. I don't know what the CD art's like. Um, I have got the vinyl because at the end of the day, the vinyl was 20 quid. Which I think is about right for a new album. The CD was 12 99 I was a little bit disappointed that with the vinyl, you, you didn't get a download code. A little bit disappointed, but ho-hum. This is the way things go sometimes. But I have got it from YouTube. Um, I've got it on my iPod, so I'll be playing it on my iPod on the LP player. And uh, yeah, I'm really enjoying it. So side B, as I've just shown you there, starts with Demon Fire. Oh, ho, ho. now this is a this is a brilliant track. It really is an excellent track. The first time I heard this one, I get got goosebumps. The whole spoken word, I really like this. He's done it on a few tracks at the start, and I really like that. Really, really like the spoken word at the start. And then the killer guitarist, the you know, he's talking, and then all of a sudden, ba -na 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 I mean, I've probably done a terrible. In pers um, impersonation of that, but the way it gets started, the killer guitar riff is absolutely awesome. It's killer stuff, it really is. Great lyrics, excellent toe tapper, and I think it's on a par with shot on the a shot on the dark, shot in the dark. This one, so nine out of ten. We then move on to Wild Reputation, track number eight, and for this one, again another eight out of ten. Bit of a different sound here, bit of a bluesy rocker, which is what ACDC really are at heart—a rock and roll band. And a blues rock band, you can really see that particularly in the early Bon Scott records. But again, consistent, which suits the album. No Man's Land, track number eight, another excellent track. Now, given the par for the score, as I said, the par for the course is about eight. I might give this one 8.5, but I'll keep it eight, given Shot in the Dark is a nine. And Demon Fire as well, they're the Holy Grails. But a really catchy, slower track, which builds over time. And the perfection... Of that chorus, the No Man's Land, oh, it is to die for. It is absolutely fantastic. There are a hell of a lot of highlights on this album, particularly Demon Fire, Shot in the Dark, Realise, Rejection, No Man's Land, Kick You When You're Down. It's such a solid album. Again, track number 10, Systems Down. There's not much more I can bring to the table at this point. Systems Down, Money Shot, both track 10 and track 11, both solid tracks. Not as keen on Money Shot, so I've given Money Shot a 7 out of 10. But Systems Down, another solid track, 8 out of 10. And the final track is Code Red, another 8 out of 10. I really like the guitar riff at the start of this track. Again, a little bit similar to No Man's Land, pushes towards the 8.5. And uh, the introductions to all of these tracks are really enticing. The reason I laugh there is because when I started listening to this, I obviously haven't read the lyrics, there's no lyric sheet in here. And uh, rather, than, rather than going station to station, yeah, Code Red. I kept, I kept thinking, say something, say something, code red. Because that's what it sounds like, station to station, say something, say something. And that's what I was singing at the start. But it is station to station, yeah, code red. Another 8 out of 10. You know, a really, really solid album. Uh, if this is to be the ACDC swan song, then so be it. I'd love to see a tour. You know, after all this COVID shit's done, hopefully next year, if not 2022. Uh, hopefully we'll get a... A world tour and hopefully I'll be fortunate enough to get a ticket because I would love to see these guys once again 
And I've never seen Brian Johnson. I went to see them in 2016 on the Rock or Bus Tour with Axl Rose. But to see Brian Johnson would uh, would be really good. Really worth my money, I think. So the verdict here is just below an 80 to 7.9 out of 10. And for me, that's a really strong album. Sort of a 4 out of 5 stars, isn't it? ACDC can't do anything wrong here. I really don't think they can. There's a few tracks, as I've, as I've alluded to there, that I've still got to get into. But it's a really, really strong effort. And as I said before... I've written in my notes here. If this is to be the final album, which by the law of averages you'd expect with ACDC, we had Stiff Upper Lip in 2000, Black Ice 2008, Rock or Bust 2014, and Power Up 2020. So to have four albums in the space of 20 years, you're probably looking at five or six years till the next one. So they're not the kind of band to rush out another album. So I think this might well be the swan song for ACDC. I've said Brian Johnson, I think he's over the age of 70 now. Angus has got to be towards it. None of these are young men, not even Stevie Young, uh, who, of course, is Angus's nephew. He's over 50. So none of these are young men, but for a couple of has-gones and people who have passed it, it's not a bad, bad effort, is it? That's what I keep telling people. And anybody who's an ACDC fan, maybe have never heard an ACDC track in their life, go and listen to this. It is a really good listen and I'm chuffed that it is. I would have hated ACDC to have potentially gone out on a bit of a flop. But they've gone out in style, it looks like. And, uh, yeah, great album. And that's going to be it for today's album review. I hope you've enjoyed. If you have, leave a like down below. That really helps more people to see these videos. I've done a few ACDC album reviews. I've reviewed High Voltage, their first international album. I've also reviewed Back in Black, obviously their biggest album on the channel. So I'll be leaving links to both of those probably up here or down here somewhere in the end screen. So... If you want to go and watch those, feel free and uh, let me know what you think of those videos as well. I'm hoping to bring a few more ACDC reviews, but I'm going to hold fire till Christmas because for Christmas, I'm going to get High Voltage, Powerage, or Powerage, uh, Flick of the Switch, and Fly on the Wall on vinyl. I, I do quite like to show the physical copy on these videos. So although I've already done High Voltage, um, the Powerage uh, review might well wait till after Christmas, but I might do something like Highway to Hell potentially before Christmas. But as I say, if you enjoyed that, leave a like. Subscribe for regular album reviews, top tens, etc, etc. I do have a diverse music taste, but generally on the album, uh, on, on the channel, not on the album. On the channel, it's generally hard rock stuff. So if you're into that sort of stuff, uh, feel free to check out the channel. But again, there's also the softer stuff. I've got Carpenters and Neil Diamond on there. So you can see the, the spectrum uh, of my music tastes. And of course, any new albums that come out by any of my favourites, I'll be sure to review them like this one. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed. I've been Toby from TIJ Music. Enjoy the rest of your music listening day, and for now, I will see you all later. Goodbye.